What's going on, guys? You got Kwasi here for Kwasi Animation Studio and Kwasi Media Network. All right, so today we're going to talk about character types or model types and how the model type does not change your animation style, but rather what you choose to do with those characters. And I find a lot of people come to me saying stuff like, well, I want to learn how to, uh, you know, uh, uh, do, you know, animation for anime. I'm like, there's no thing like that's not a thing, even though I get why you think that. So what right here, we have five different character models all the way from the most low poly all the way up to the most high poly. OK, and I'm in render mode, but I'm also doing like the texture thing in solid view. So this is why he's purple, because you're only seeing the normals over here. He doesn't have anything because his shader is 100 percent procedural and his is texture based along with his and his. OK, so with that being said, let's look at this. All right. So right here. We have a character model that is uh, put together from parts from Xenoverse 2, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. And then beside him, we have a character from v -Roid Studio. And then beside him, we have a character from Ready Player Me Online. And then we have a character from Make Human. And then this one is from Human Generated, the Blender add-on. So um, that gives you some pretty high quality character models. All right. So if you've uh, ever gone over to the network channel, you've seen me use all of these models. Okay. So I use all these models and the animation style doesn't change because I use a different model type. So this is the thing that I want to make known. This is why this video may not be that long because I want you to understand that no matter what your whole thing is figuring out this part, we see how, when we turn sideways, we have all of the rig types. So these three have a rig on them. A control rig and this these two just have their armatures okay so when i did this short i i just did it with an armature when i usually do rod is just with their armature but with like dobbin's life which is this is dobbin's from this is the new dobbin model so in dobbin's life i use this is what i use okay so there's no so i mean i could use the main armature but i use a control rig it just gives me much more freedom and this is what you are looking for you're looking to try to figure out how to get more freedom in your animation so should you use control rig should you use the armature it depends on what you want to do if you're just doing illustrations a control rig would be a good idea but you don't necessarily have to have it but when you want more flexibility in your animation you want a control rig why so that you can do you can do these more articulate motions that you really can't get with the armature i mean you could do them but this might be like there's like helper bones and stuff like that that allow you to get that shoulder to just be right in the perfect position and i find that most of the times people are trying to they're asking this question like well how can i get better animations i can do this right here well don't be afraid to maneuver the character a good example let's go into uh, uh admiral natus here and if we go up here this is a, a, a auto rig pro control rig so we go up to tool and it gives us a space here. So when I click here, it allows me to snap uh, between FK and IK. OK, but because IK is on, even on the legs, I'm able to bring him down. All right. So if I push, you know, GZ or Z, most people say now we have we, we clearly see that we have a, a different mobility level. But if I come down here to Zelker from ROD and I try that move. OK. And I tried to move. This is what we get. The character just going up and down. And so because he's because the armature is a default in I and in, uh, in FK mode, even though I could do some tricks to get it to be in IK, I can do things to get it to be in IK, add certain extension bones, uh, pole targets and whatnot. But in the series, I don't really need it because they're not doing a lot of external or extra actions versus like in Dobbin's life, Dobbin himself may be doing something like sitting down, standing up, making a joke, laughing. I need more flexibility. So therefore, when you see this control rig, I'm able to get more flexibility out of the rig. So now we have, see how you have way more control in the center versus if it was just a plain old bone. Okay, so if I come over here again, if I go to Zilker's thing, yes, I can fold him in the middle, do not get me wrong, but there is a difference in the control, why? Because now, if I want to go between, I'm only getting a very specific action. Again, like I said, there's they look similar, but do not get to get it confused with the control rig. There are different things because now I can come in here and I can tweak this bone. I can tweak how far you see how much more smoother, how much more, how smoother it is. OK, so versus the other one where it just seemed like it just went straight over. 
Okay, same thing here with the make human character. Okay, I know that these models are, aren't exactly the prettiest, but they are great for background models. Okay, so again, I can do the same thing here. He still has the same ability because this is a lot more different compared to the other one. See how I have a different level of, of flexibility here. Okay, even there. All right. So let's go over here to the human generator character. And when we look at this character, let's say let's zoom in a little tighter. His, his, again, he doesn't have a control rig on him. So we still have that same fold, but if I had the actual control rig on him, this center part will be a little bit smoother because the weights would be different. So again, you're looking for a change in your control rig or your armature, not necessarily your model type, because any animation I have, I can put on any of these characters and it's going to work just fine. The issue that most people are running into is believing that there is a different animation type because you changed the rig. If I want to, with like the ARP rig, let's say I use again, Natus, let's go over to General Natus again. And we can, we can, we can literally create stretch. So if I say, well, let's stretch the limb. So as I stretch, you see how much more it, it stretches it out versus how it originally was. So it's just like, you can create those things again. Like for instance, move the fingers and they actually have it, the ability to lock these fingers can be locked okay because of the actual action i'm sorry not action the because it's an ik so if i go and switch on like the hand ik when i say well if i click this is an fk right but i snapped it versus if i switch which is the same thing it's just like snapping back and forth but i also can parent the i can pin the elbow i can parent the fingers and these are certain things it's like for instance like finger grasp see how it starts to go backward because of the direction of the finger. But if I move the hand, let's put it on local. Again, I just want to show you, we can see that there's a, we can see that like there's a difference in the rotation. So I want to go backward because I want the fingers to sit still where it is. So when I go now, it's got a certain grasp point, but this is me having control of it via a control rig. But if this was just what you would say, um, uh, I'm trying to think about the word. If this was just an armature, I wouldn't be able to do that. I would have to go in and physically go in and do that myself. And and that's not necessarily a problem because I've done it for a while. But the thing that I want people to understand is, is you're trying to figure out how to do a different animation because you have a different model, which again, like I said, creatively, I can get it, but aesthetically or um, in general, it's, it doesn't make a difference no matter what model you use. If you're using a model from a game rip or if you're using a model from, you know, from uh, if you're using Unreal Engine or something like that, you have MetaHumans or you're using Character Creator 3 or Daz 3D or something to that effect. Or even like if you download something from like ActorCore or whatnot, it, it doesn't really make a difference. Like you need to understand the mechanics of how your physical self moves versus and then taking that reference or whatever it is and placing it on your model. Because the moment you take that puppet and start puppeteering, you're just mimicking real world and, and unless you're going to do those extremes. Like I said, people talk about squash and stretch, but we don't squash and stretch. We contract and expand. And you say the same thing. No, it is not. It's like if you flex your muscle, it doesn't squish. It contracts. So if we want. So if you say, for instance, I took some of these rigs and I put uh, one of the blender add ons on X muscle, it will literally contract that muscle. So you can see those expansions of the muscles, but it's not going to squash and stretch. It's going to contract and expand and those two things are not the same look at bugs bunny squishing or but Duffy ducks squishing that's not a contraction that is literally just flattening and then just pulling straight out you know what i'm saying it's not the same thing so when we look at this here we have to say to ourselves it's like okay how do i want a caricature animation which is what you really are looking for that's what you get with like things like disney pixar dreamworks um uh, warner brothers with Di uh with their looney tunes and whatnot this is these this is what you're getting you're getting caricature animation versus if you look at something like a, a more uh, uh um, something akin to like maybe a buzz light year or something like that where i'm not talking about like toy story i'm talking like this last movie come out you're getting more realistic animations with some extremes on top of it to sell and action but for the most part if someone's walking they're just walking they're not you know their foot's not expanding and getting long and hitting the ground in this floppy manner they're just walking so your model should not dictate that unless that is what you want your model to do but don't get this but get rid of this idea that um uh, what I'm trying to present is, is do not have this false concept that 
if you use this model or this model, like if you use this model and this model, the animation has to be different. Like, no, I can put that same animation on this character and it looks just as good, if not better. And, and vice versa for the other three. So it's like, don't don't limit yourself by uh, by assuming that if you use this model type, it has to have this type of work on top of it. That's just that's just foolhardy hardy and silly. So let's let's expand a little further. It's like every video that I post, my objective is to teach you something in filmmaking, teach you something in animation, teach you something in in scene and set building, so that you can create worlds or environments that you can tell your story in. And there's no, um, I don't, I can't think of the word. There's no, um, excuse me, there's no. Uh, inconsistencies or or you're not making like these you're not trying to figure it out as you go you already have the tools you can excessively you can access those tools and, and you can automatically go right in and get to work without all of the hub hubbub of trying to figure out what to do next so when you come to this channel understand if you start from a video that i did let's say a year ago you need to go keep going forward and say okay well i see where he was at there understand what he was showing me here now he's giving me more clarification on how to get a certain look in the volume a certain look in uh this the scene and and how to use depth of field and how to use lighting and how to get the environment to match my story or match the thing i'm trying to do if you're just doing some sort of image or illustration again you still need to understand those principles because you're trying to make your image or your illustration stand out the same way if you was doing some sort of short film or a film or a sort of video or whatever the case may be is don't set yourself up for failure thinking that you're moving forward i mean not moving forward you're thinking that you you are limited by the model type because i can take that this this human generator model down here and literally do whatever is that you think of when you think about dragon ball characters so like if i use zilker here and i use any animation say from game i can retarget those animations to him to wyatt here and and, and it's it's nothing it, it literally works and it's like oh well that comes from this it doesn't matter it's that i'm saying to you is that there's no limit because you using a certain model type don't limit yourself okay so with that being said you know i hope you guys got something from that next video should be coming sometime this week none but love